Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here once again on Forza Horizon 4. Now for those of you that have been around this channel since the very beginning, only weirdly enough only a few months ago, uh, I actually started doing a series on all of the Forza Horizon 4 car pass cars. Now currently I think there are overall 42 available if you include the ones that are coming in next week's pack. But sadly, um, at those 42 I did a video on... Three of them, sadly. I only ever got up to the RX-7 Spirit R-Type A. So I decided, you know, after unfortunately a few issues with the car pass for me personally, now I don't know whether these were a common bug or something I could have easily fixed, but I basically spent the next three months without access to a lot of these cars. They just wouldn't download for some reason. It was very, very strange, which was one of the big reasons why I stopped doing this series. I decided, with the car pass coming to an end now, I wanted to go back and actually drive all of these cars. Now, I do own all of them. I must have accidentally cleaned them all in one big job lot at some point. But what I used to do with this series was I would just drive the car bone stock. I've decided now, you know, with things like the Triumph, you know, at D248 rated, this Porsche at D180 rated, that probably isn't going to be the best way to go about things. So I'm going to make a little build on each of these cars. It's going to be nothing ridiculous, no 2,000 horsepower builds, although I have got a series planned for things like that. It's just meant to be sort of sensible improvements to some of the cars. Now, for example, the RX-7, I'm probably not going to put a build on this. Uh, you know, the Porsche uh, 9, uh, 959 Pro Drive Rally Raid, I'm not going to put a build on that. But things like the 356, I'm probably going to give it a little bit more power, you know, a little bit more sophisticated. So it is, you know, there's actually things to talk about rather than just cruising around at 20 miles an hour. So we will therefore jump in to this very first car pass car review in the RX-7 R Type A. Obviously, I say the very first, obviously, the return. Hopefully, like I said, I'm going to try and get through all of these cars, you know, and then, like I said, there's another series I've got planned as a wedding. It's probably going to be either weekly or twice weekly series. Overall, obviously, we'll start today with the RX-7. All three of the other cars will be in a playlist as well, you know, by the end. By the aim of this is just to get through all of them. Maybe I'll even jump into the other DLC cars as well, like the James Bond pack, uh, the Mitsubishi pack. I did a video on the Evo 10, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when that first dropped, and then sadly never really got round to driving any more of them. So let's move over then all the way back to the RX-7. Let's try to find it. Uh, I'm having a bit of a meltdown at the moment. It's, it's a... Mazda, that's the one. I, I couldn't remember the name for the for the life of me there for a second. Where there it is, it's in blue for some reason. I'm not too sure why. But we're gonna take this thing out today. This was one that I remember that I was quite a bit of hype around when this game first came out because you know it's it's a Mazda. It's I'm pretty certain this one is rotary as well. I'll have a quick look at the stats of this thing as well, just quickly before we move into it. I'm pretty certain it is a rotary engine car. I mean, I'm not even certain it is, so yeah, it doesn't actually say, sadly, uh, what it is, but we're rolling 276 horsepower, 1,270 kilos from a 1.3 litre engine overall as well. Very, very small engine there, displacement wise. Uh, sorry, 1,000. Oh, I, I'm having a bit of a mess. It's safe to say. Yeah, let's hit this thing up on to the roads. Ultimately, this thing would probably be best suited in A class, you know, give it a bit more power. Uh, give it a bit more stability. You probably have yourself quite a good little street racing car overall. Ultimately, I don't think it would end up being sort of a world beat or anything like that. But it still should be okay. But ultimately, this thing from most people is designed to drift. So we're going to take it out and do a bit of drifting here today. It does sound very, very good. We'll try and get out of the festival so you can actually hear the car a bit better. Does sound all getting a little bit twitchy already? That's not ideal. Clearly, and we broke the car off. But apart from that, we'll, we'll gloss over that. So yeah, what I am sort of thinking about doing down the line is maybe you know racing each of these cars like a championship or something. Just trying to give them a bit more. But obviously, I do already run a lot of championships on this game already. You know, I've got like the weekly Fort Stun one day, sometimes more of a championship. Uh, the uh, weekly championships, obviously, are championships to so unlock rare cars and all things like that. So there's certainly, you know, I do do a lot of... Oh, we're going to we're gonna take it up the mountain road. Okay. Oh, no, we got that all a little bit too wrong. Obviously, this one is actually a speed zone. Yeah, these are sort of the things that this car is designed to be doing. You know, tight little mountain passes, 
drifting around. It probably needs a little bit more power if we want it to be quite drift spec, but we'll try it with 270. Hey, it can't really hold its lines all too well. Maybe we'll give this thing a bit of a tune. We'll drive it around, we'll get back up, and then we shall give it a bit of a build. Come on, just need, yeah, we just need a little bit more power on it. It just hasn't quite got enough for its weight, I'm afraid, to really get the back end sliding. But overall, oh, mini, move, please. Can't get around him. This thing does sound good, though. Absolutely rev the nuts off it. 9k near enough. Now we head into a proper drift zone. And we're going to balls it up. Yeah, this thing just needs a bit more power. I, I mean, the Turk Stallion, obviously, as well. I'm pretty certain. Is that an RX-7? I think it is. On this game. Yeah, but it, it just... We need a bit more power. I'll be up to about 400, 450, I think. And we should probably have ourselves a good little drift car here today. Come on, up the hill. You can do it. Little master, I believe. Get it up into fourth gear there. See, once you've got a bit more speed in it, it can slide around there as we go for a bit of a wall tap. But yeah, you do, you can't, it doesn't just naturally kick out its rear end, sadly. But yeah, we will keep the stock, uh, obviously the stock engine as such, and just whack a few upgrades onto that. Like I said, I think it just doesn't have quite enough power. We can go with the, there we go, we can go with the rotary, we'll get up to 340 twin turbos. Yes, please, 450 horsepower. Uh, we'll have a quick look at a, you know, these cars, they're meant to be ultra customizable as well. What have we got in terms of that, we have got that one I'm quite a fan of. Uh, what have we got rear wing wise? Uh, we've got a couple of dinner tables. <gasps> I'm a big fan of that one, I'll be honest. This is, we're going very much Rocket Bunny vibes here. That one I like, the Boomex ones are very, very cool so far. Is it gonna continue like that? Yes, it is. Boomex, they're making good, they're making good things for this car. And we shall go like that. So yeah, safe to say this thing is looking Far more drift already. Now we got up to, I think it was about 450 horsepower now, wasn't it? Overall, yeah, 450 horsepower obviously still weighs about just under 1300 kilos. Let's see how it fares now. We'll probably whack a little bit of a setup on it as well before we get back out there. But yeah, it's all about, you know, just probably the standard thing that we'll do. You know, give it a little bit of a run, see where it's probably best suited, and then give it a few upgrades to see how well we can get it to where we feel. It is at its strongest. So, uh, in terms of tyre pressures, we'll drop them down ever so slightly. But the main thing will obviously be the camber. We can't edit that because I haven't put the right upgrades on. Okay, we'll see how this thing fares nonetheless. Don't need, we don't want too many upgrades on it. We want it to keep it, you know, nice. You, you want to be able to know it's, it's still close to standard. I must admit, saying that, I've given it 170 more horsepower, but people that buy this thing are known for tuning. Let's bring it back out of the festival. That sounds interesting. We just need to get out of the festival so we can hear it properly. That, yeah, I feel like we made this better. Sandy the rope counter sort of goes off a bit. Yeah, this thing, this thing sounds good. Certainly get the back end out as well. Don't hit those rocks again, Matt. There we go. Yeah, this thing does sound good, mate. It's a shame the Forza, 7, uh, Forza Horizon 4 sounds, I should say, aren't the best in the world, but... Oh, come on. Remember to dip that clutch, Matt. Oh! I feel like we've narrowly avoided that tree. Yeah, now we've got a bit of a drift car. It sounds the part, it looks the part, and it can slide, it can walk the walk, and it can talk the talk. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Shame I can't. Now, the one weakness to this car is, understandably, me, because I'm not a drifter. Just wheel spin for days. It can hold, it's now got the power, and it is so much more enjoyable like this. I mean, this thing would not be good in a race. Because we have put completely the wrong upgrades in that sense for it. But it can hold its slides, and that's the important thing. 
I mean, this was obviously a bit of a strange time for Mouser. They were trying to experiment with the rotaries. No one really notably followed on. Obviously, it's really just the RX-7 and the RX-8 are known as, like, a the rotary car sound. It was an interesting idea. Certainly created some interesting sounds as well, which is always nice. Try and get that back end going again. See, you can kick it out now. She's how she should be. And this is very much sort of dark underground culture driving at night, having to drift around hoping the cops don't find you. I know people always ask for cops on Horizon 4, but personally, I'm not a fan of the idea. Holy moly, that's close. That was a lucky escape. We've, I, I like to think, you know, we've, we've done okay now with this car. I can walk away from this one feeling happy. Personally, I've never... I, I wouldn't say I haven't been a fan of these cars, but they've never been, you know, a personal favourite for me. You know, it certainly wasn't those cars that I personally have, like... For a lot of people, you know, it is a sort of a poster car, but for me, it, I don't know what it is. It, it just isn't. But I must admit, I'm starting to understand why people love this thing so much. Why don't you just give it that small... Well, I say small amount of power. A bit of power upgrades. It really does start to come alive there as I go and wrap it around a tree, like I'm sure many, many of them have done in the past. Go for a bit of a donut there. Com completely intentional. A lot of wheel spin. She can hold her wheels. I just love this sound. It's probably got a bit too long gears now, unfortunately. Oh, trees! Holy moly, that was close. Luckily, we're sort of breaking back into the sunlight as well now. Is that a tractor? That's a tractor! Ah! Okay, yeah, this thing is good at control drifting. Holy moly. We've had a couple of very near misses there. But it does sound... It, it sounds good. I think I can walk away, like I said, I can walk away happy with this car. It's only a little bill. It's not meant to be some super spec out drift monster. Just, just small upgrades, small improvements. Like I said, I've got plans for a bit of a you know crazy car series as well. Hopefully that will be coming in the near, not too distant future. Go, little Nazda. Can't get over how good it sounds. It's not exactly slow either, to be fair. It holds its angles, but once you get it pointing in the right direction, it picks up, it moves. You have to get about 160 out of it, I reckon, before we hit the festival. Obviously, the gears are a bit broken, but... It looks like 160, 165. Holy moly! So you could probably push up towards 200. Bloody hell. 180? 180... Well, we're going to hit the jump now. 183, 184, 185, 186, 7, 8, 9... Holy moly, this thing is fast. I didn't expect it to be that quick down the straights with only 450 horsepower. Holy moly. And with proper gearing, you could probably get that up to 200. But we will bring it back down in to the festival. The sun starts to rise once again here in the UK. Give it some slides. Back to the Horizon Festival. Yeah, obviously, the JDM life is very much real with this thing. But I think that'll do us for this video, though. These aren't meant to be sort of 45-minute documentaries on these cars. The Mazda RX-7 Spirit R Type A. A brilliant, brilliant car. All it took was, well, two technically upgrades. 
for this thing to be absolutely incredible. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Next time out, we will be driving the Porsche 959 Pro Rally Raid car as well. We'll take that over some terrain as well. But yeah, that has been it from me for this one. And I'll hopefully see you guys next time for another video.